I smell asphalt, I think of Marine. That's the last sensation I had before I blacked out. The thick smell of asphalt. And the first thing I saw when I woke up was her face. She said she had fixed my bike. Free. No strings attached. I should have known then that things are never that simple. Yeah, when I think of Marine, I think of two things. Asphalt and trouble. Rip Burger, you're dumber than dirt. Oh, Mr. Corley, if you'd only listen to my plan, my vision. I know your plan, Rip Burger. You're waiting for me to die so you can take over my company. Oh, sir, that's horrible. I am not waiting for you to die. You know I've never liked you, Rip. But you have business know-how and killer instincts that I respect. Why, thank you, sir. But this latest idea of yours, riding up to our shareholders' meeting with a gang of bikers? Who do you think you're fooling? The shareholders, sir. It's good PR to be seen hobnobbing with real Corley Motors customers. What do you know about our customers, Adrian? You've never even been on a bike. Well, you know I'd be on one right now, sir, if it weren't for my destabilizing inner ear condition. Ah, your ears are fine. It's what's between them that scares me. some boys I can ride with. Step on it. Let's find out who they are. Ben, we're broke. Yeah. And if some cash doesn't come our way soon, we're in big trouble. Relax. I have a feeling something's coming our way. Something big. Uh, you better stay out here, Rip. This place is bikers only. <laughs> All right! Who's the guy that drove over my car? What could possibly be taking so long? 
Maybe old man Corley got himself in trouble. Yeah, maybe they took the old guy out back and worked him over with a two-by-four. Hmm, an appealing notion, but improbable. More likely he's boring them to death with some tale of the glory days. <laughs> but Malcolm, isn't that illegal? Not back then it wasn't. <laughs> so who do you ride with these days? He rides with me. Although I'm sure he'd much rather be riding with your little club. I told you to wait out in the limo, Rip Burger. I thought you might like some help with your sales pitch, sir. Sales pitch? Yes. We've come here today to offer you and your men employment. Mr. Corley requires an escort to the annual Corley Motors shareholders meeting. Does this look like an escort service to you? You would be well compensated for your time, of course. Not interested. It's uh, fairly obvious that you could use the money. Listen, I said we're not for rent. The Polecats are not goons for hire. Not even if it were Malcolm Corley's dying wish. Rip Burger! That does it! I'm gonna... Hold on there, Malcolm. If you don't mind, I'd like to step outside with Mr. Rip Burger for a little chat. Excellent idea. And the doctor says he only has a few months to live. That's bad news for all of us. He's not just a nice guy. He's also the last motorcycle maker in the country. What happens to Corley Motors if he dies? Don't worry. I have a plan. And if you come to the shareholders meeting with us, you'll find out what it is. No dice, Rip Burger. The Polecats are not thugs for rent. If you want to buy muscle, you should go find the rot wheelers. The old man says it's the Polecats are nothing. Then I guess it'll have to be nothing. Hmm. And that's your last word? That's it. Well, I'd like to make you just one final offer. <sighs> Bolus, take this coat and go get his motorcycle. We'll have to tie up this little 200-pound loose end. <laughs> it will need to look like an accident. That stuffed shirt actually thinks I'll leave him in control of Corley Motors when I go. Boy, is he in for a surprise. Hey, where's Ben going? Your colleague has decided to accept our generous offer after all. As a matter of fact, he's gone on ahead to scout out the route. He did? Well then, let's roll him, boys! Yahoo! Corbill, here we come! I don't have anything. They're empty. I don't have anything. Empty boxes. He really should flatten these, so they can be recycled. Some joker took my keys. I don't like that. The kickstand. Open up! I'm not putting my lips on that. He, uh, fixed your door. It was sticky. Look, I don't want no trouble. Just leave me out of this mess. Nothing to grab. It's empty. Yeah, right. Play.
might look good mounted on my handlebars. Nah. Looks like you're out of customers. Yeah, your gang talk off with those... those well-dressed gentlemen. So what'll it be, Mac? Where'd everybody head off to? What am I, the cruise director? Maybe they're up on the Lido deck. <laughs> I think you're in on this whole bum deal. Yeah, well, what are you gonna do about it? I don't have anything. I don't have anything. What do you have? I want to know who knocked me out. Maybe you just passed out. You should learn to handle your liquor. You want something? What do you got for a headache? A little sympathy. Thanks. But not much. You want something? I'm looking for my keys. I have no idea what you're talking about. You gonna order something? No. You gonna order something? No. I've never liked nose rings. Me neither, but someone dared me. You know what might look better on your nose? What? The bar. <clears throat> now don't mess around with me. All right, all right! I got your keys, but I don't know nothing. They had guns! They told me to store you as long as possible. Why? I don't know. I don't know. I overheard them say something about an ambush up the road. What else? Nothing, nothing. Look, man. Here are your keys, all right? Oh, uh, someone did say something about killing you and making it look like an accident. They didn't do too good of a job there. But why ambush the pole gants? I'd better get moving.
Man, this is gruesome. My editor better print these in color. Now I have to get you some help, I suppose. <clears throat> ah, quit moaning. I know someone around here who can fix anything. What are you? I'm a mechanic, and apparently a pretty good doctor as well. My name's Maureen. My name's Ben. Why did you hit me over the head, Maureen? You were in an accident. A reporter found you and brought you and your bike here. My bike? What have you done with my bike? Brought it back from the dead. Sort of like what I did with you. Need a little help getting it finished, though. Who are you? Maureen, remember? If that's too hard, maybe you should just stick with Mo. Do you have a last name? I prefer not to use it. What about you? Same deal. Then it's Ben and Mo forever, I guess. This an authorized Corley Service Center? Now you could call this a Corley Service Center, but I don't have the official paperwork. Ah, an illegitimate Corley operation. I prefer to think of it as a renegade Corley operation. Where'd you learn bikes? I grew up working on them with my dad. One summer we did nothing but restore this old hardtail together. I mean, we scrubbed every bolt until it shined. But he took off one day and he never came back. So I switched to toasters. You live in this town? Well, Melonweed's not much of a town. What's left of it is sinking about a foot a year. People either learn to adjust or they leave, which is fine with me. Not a people person? I'm just better with toasters, that's all. You seem more concerned with me than your bike. How's it look? It looks better than it did, but you gotta help me out. The front forks are wasted, so you'll have to get some new ones. And someone stole my welding torch. Can you believe that? I can't finish without one. And last but not least, I patched up your ruptured gas tank, but you're out of fuel and I don't have any. Where am I supposed to find all this stuff? You can hack it, tough guy. Where am I going to find new forks? Well, they don't have to be new-new, just not broken into little pieces. You can start by asking Todd in the trailer across the way. He runs the junkyard. How am I supposed to find your torch? I don't know. Set up a dragnet. Still can't believe someone would steal my torch. Who around here would do a thing like that? Where's the gas? Well, there's a whole tower full of it at the edge of town. I have this crazy, irrational intuition that tells me maybe it's worth checking out. Actually, I think I can handle it. Good. I don't have any money to pay you with. Hey, this one's free. I haven't touched anything besides a toaster for so long. Getting my hands on your hog has really been a pleasure. Well, thanks. Don't sweat it. I gotta get out of this town, fast. Trouble with the law? Not in this county. Then what's the hurry? There's going to be an ambush. Ambush? Who's ambushing who? Not sure, but my gang's involved. We better get this bad boy back on the road then, huh? Well, I'll let you get back to work. Let me know if you need any aspirin or anything. I hate seeing her like this. Why? It's really my best side. Who's this? Oh, that's me and my Uncle Pete. He took care of me after Dad split at this place he called the Mink Ranch. And when he died, he left it to me. You're a mink farmer? Nah, that place went belly up long before he died. But I still go back there whenever I need to get away for a while. Oh good, you're not dead yet. I might still get a quote. I heard you saved my life. Yeah, but don't worry. I wasn't trying to. I was just looking for some nice roadside disaster photos and you helped. Who'd want a picture of me bleeding? It's not 
not the blood. It's the way you were, all twisted up like a pretzel. Listen, I've got to stop an ambush. Ambush? Really? Where? Somewhere between here and Corville, my crew is escorting some VIPs to the Corley Motors shareholders meeting. And there's an ambush waiting for them somewhere up the road. Um, uh, I... I... Yeah? This is hard for me. I... I need... Come on, man, spit it out! Could you give me a ride in your car? I've got to stop this ambush. You're right. We have to get to the ambush, all right. But I'm afraid I'm without wheels at the moment. How did you get us here? Hitched. Well, I'd better be going. All right, drive safe now. It's empty. I don't want to hurt Moe's mailbox. Thanks for the lift. Now I got a quote for you. Either someone's doing some welding down there, or we're talking about some very sub-code wiring. Smells like burning metal down there. I'm not putting my lips on that. Who's out there? Hey! I'm trying to do my art in here, buddy! I don't got time to waste on bums like you. It's even sadder looking inside. Hey, you lousy no. <laughs> hey, I hear you already! It's locked up with steel brackets. What do you want? I got a guy coming to look at my... This view defines true beauty. I'm not putting my lips on that. He's not trying to bring these to life or anything like that. I had a dog with a funnel on its head when I was a kid. Better hustle this back to Mo. <clears throat> That's my welding torch. How'd you get it? Oh, it was just lying around. A pair of forks, a little gas, and we're set. Thank you.
this fence is electrified. Tough looking padlock. I couldn't break that lock. I couldn't break that lock. This gas can was full. Mm -hmm. This hose smells like gas. It's open. to run away. Nah, we would have seen him running from the air. He must be hiding up in the tower. We got him treed. Let's go up and get him. that down there in the yard? It's him. Get him. Where? Over there. Quick. You go around the other side and we'll have him cornered. Where'd he go? Let's call it quits, huh, boss? No. Let's call on reinforcements. <clears throat> oh, good. You get this from the gas tower? Not exactly. Just a pair of new forks and we're on the road. Thank you. 
this should be easy. Just the kind of forks I need, right on top. Down. Needs dogs. Here, Poochie Pooch. Pooch. Bon appetit, mutton. Just the kind of forks I need, right on top. <clears throat> nice forks. Where'd you find them? Right next to the knives and spoons. Well, that's it. Wait outside for a minute and I'll finish you up. I'm working on a surprise. I hate surprises. All right, here she comes. I cool or what? You're amazing. I should crash that thing every day. So what's the surprise? Oh, just your average everyday pre-regulation destroyer class solid fuel recoil booster. You're serious? Yes. But only the vultures. I have my connections. Now, are you going to try this thing out or not? Ooh, I wish I had a camera. I wish I had some way of paying you back. Just beat it, will ya? You're scaring away my regular customers. Bye, Mo. Send me a postcard from the ambush.
All units follow me. Ben, how'd you get behind us? Where are the suits? Corley's making a pit stop. He has a bladder the size of a thimble, man. Ripburger? Haven't seen him in a while. Ben, man, what's the deal? Did you find something up the road? Are we headed for trouble? No. We're in it. Put my head in a basket, cause I'd had a tank full. When she blow my gasket, I surely was thankful. Till I head for the skies up above It's a woman with wheels that I love Come on, old man. I gotcha. Now, do something incriminating, like ambush somebody. Aha, the plot thickens. You shouldn't have laughed at me in those board meetings, Malcolm. What a psycho. Gotcha. Hey, look what I found in the bushes. What is that? It's a chokehold. Come here and I'll demonstrate. It's got a camera. I'll get her. No. Nestor will take care of her. You have an important engagement with the rest of the Corley family. Right. But don't forget to destroy that camera. Yeah, yeah. Now then, Malcolm, how about one for the road? Corley? Corley? Ben! <coughs> I guess Rip Burger couldn't wait for natural causes. Just like him to hit a man when his flies down. <coughs> Rip Burger did this to you? Yeah, he knew I was dying, and he knew that my will would put him out of a job. He wants to take over Corley Motors, Ben. Sell it off to foreigners, lay off workers, start making minivans. You understand me? Minivans! Oh. <coughs> you gotta hurt him for me, Ben. Promise me you'll hurt him bad. I promise. <coughs> I want my daughter to take over the company. You have a daughter? Yeah, and she's a real mechanical genius, Ben. Rebuilt the first carburetor when she was four. Eh, I used to call her the diaper dynamo. <coughs> Find my daughter, Ben. Find Marine. Marine? Rip Burger's way ahead of me. I just hope Marine can handle herself until I get there. Hmm. Gun, I understand. Why'd he bring a camera? Who does this guy work for? Corley Motors? <coughs> Nestor, what's that moving over there by that pile? I don't know, Rip, but I think that pile is Bolus. <sighs> yes. Now I remember. You're the smart one, aren't you? There's Moe's shack, but I don't see the Lumo. Maybe I beat them here. On second thought, maybe I didn't. Looks like someone searched this place in a hurry. Nothing left but debris, except for that smashed up camera. Back's open. No film inside. Hmm. Mo said she didn't have a camera. Here's Moe's picture of her and her Uncle Pete at his mink ranch. She said she went there whenever she needed to get away for a while. That's pretty much my only lead right now.
way soon. I gotta get a plan. Fast. Sucker's mine. Hey, killer. What? Hey, it's cool. Your secret's safe with me. What secret? Haven't you been watching the news? Once again, our top story tonight. Malcolm Corley, owner of Corley Motors, was found dead at a rest stop just outside the town of Melonweed. Apparently, the benevolent patriarch and CEO was viciously beaten about the head and neck, savagely and without mercy. Police have arrested a notorious outlaw biker gang known as the Polecats. No. With the exception of their leader, who is still at large. Roadblocks have been set up along Highway 9 in an effort to apprehend this dangerous and violent criminal. We've been set up. Roadblocks suck. I shouldn't have left the gang there. Hey, I don't want to hear anything about it. You ain't making me an accessory after the fact. Just lay low, man. Look, let me tell you what happened. I told you I don't want to get involved. Members of the Polecat Gang are in custody, but their leader remains at large. Authorities have issued an all-points bulletin. They got the Polecats. Latest reports suggest that the leader of the Polecats may have had an accomplice, a young mechanic. Maureen. The two are being sought by authorities for questioning in connection with the violent death of motorcycle magnate Malcolm Corley. Asked about the eminent shareholders meeting, Corley Motors Vice President Adrian Ripberger made the following statement. We cannot in good conscience go forward with the shareholders meeting until the perpetrators of this misdeed have been brought to justice. He's up to something. He wants us dead before the meeting starts. I can do that. Not gonna happen. Let me show you how to do that. Not gonna happen. You seem to have a lot of time on your hands. Not to mention nicks and scratches. <laughs> Am I distracting you? That's your truck out front. I need a ride. I look like a cabbie to you. Get lost. They're not letting anyone through that roadblock anyway. Not even truckers? They turned me around, said police business only. Pigs. Look, I really need a ride. Not gonna happen. Why? Because you're afraid of some cops? No, because I don't like you. I just killed a guy. I'm just about to. I don't think that's good for the table. Hey, Quahog! Yeah, Emmett? I'm gonna be knifing up your table for a while, all right? The customer with the knife is always right. Good talking to you. Friendly folks you get in here. Emmett's not what you'd call an I'm okay, you're okay person. Ah, shut your hole, Quahog! Ben, no time to talk. You know, it's stank in there, but I can't remember a better sleep. You gotta help me. 
Go find my editor in Corville. Tell him I took pictures of the Corley murder. You got pictures? <laughs> yeah, but some thug took my camera. So you don't have any pictures? Well, I tracked the guy to Melonweed, but I'm not going near the place. They kill me! Get my editor! He's gotta get me out of this! Take one of these fake IDs to get through the roadblocks! My career is riding on those pictures! Help me, Ben! You're my only hope! Oh, don't worry. I owe you one. If Miranda's thug is the same one that trashed Moe's place, that could be Miranda's camera I saw there. But then, who's got the film? Let me show you how to do that. Not gonna happen. Let me show you how to do that. Not gonna happen. Let me show you how to do that. Not gonna happen. Let me show you how to do that. Not gonna happen. Let me show you how to do that. Not gonna happen. Let me show you how to do that. Not gonna happen. Let me show you how to do that. Not gonna happen. Let me show you how to do that. Only if it'll shut you up. Hmm. Pathetic. Hmm. Damn. No. 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 Damn. Damn. Sure are good at that, buddy. You're pathetic. Let me try that again. Only if it'll shut you up. Hmm. You're pathetic. Ouch.
Here's Moe's picture of her and her Uncle Pete at his mink ranch. She said she went there whenever she needed to get away for a while. That's pretty much my only lead right now. Pretty mediocre fake ID. Hope no one notices the correction fluid under the name. Here. What's that? Fake federal investigator ID. Could be of some use at one of those roadblocks. Ever hear of this place? Uncle Pete's Mink Ranch. I remember there used to be some sort of weasel plantation or, or something up the road. Down Highway 9 on the other side of them damn roadblocks. I used to pick up mink meat there real cheap and sell it to school lunch programs. <laughs> that was a good scam. So how about a ride? What if they search the back and find my bike? It's buried in a pile of concentrated fertilizer powder. <laughs> Trust me, no one's gonna dig through that crap. Now you're gonna ride in the engine compartment. The engine compartment? Hey, I smuggle stuff in there all the time, and most of it's worth more than you. So stuff your carcass in there quick, and we might hit that mink dump by morning. Hope you're better with a stick shift than you are with a knife. Yeah, yeah. Oh, great. Smells like he's got a fuel leak. I love engine fires. Sorry, sir. Only police vehicles beyond this point. I'm just a fed. Jump, check it out. Huh? What's this about? Undercover agricultural steam operation. What's in the back? Fertilizer. All right, move along. Hope you rude get your man. <laughs> Stop moving. Problem with your truck? Eh, uh, <laughs> loose hose and nothing big. Uh, I, I already pulled your bike out. It's sitting right over there. Well, nice knowing you. Gotta hit the road, you know. He did have a fuel leak, and he took my fuel line to fix it. That trucker's gonna die for what he did. Won't work without a fuel line. The barn's locked. of Maureen and Malcolm. Looks like they're restoring an old hardtail together. Looks like a mink pelt. That's the insignia of the vultures. I can't believe Mo used to be a vulture. But then again, how else could she have gotten that recoil booster?
took my booster fuel. Why is she running from me? She must think the whole world's against her. I think I know how that feels. That does it. He's dead. That sign. That means I'm in cavefish territory. Maybe the boss was wrong and she ain't coming here. She's coming. We just got here first. That means all we have to do is sit here and wait. A lot of weight on those babies. Looks like Emmett dropped a load here. Won't budge. Won't budge. That's all of them. Can't be much holding that up now. Just take a little. Something tells me the bridge is out. <laughs> Professor Schmetterling's experimental flying suit. 
This is the last picture ever taken of Professor Schmetterling. Notice, jumping the Cuyahoga Gorge, although tempting, is highly illegal and dangerous. We recommend the recently constructed Boyahoga Gorge Bridge for transgorge travel. Drive safely. One of the gorge's many casualties. Ricky Myron's infamous gorge jump. Tightrope walkers, hang gliders, human cannonballs. Many have tried to cross the mighty Boyahoga Gorge, and many have failed, except for Ricky Myron the Flying Torch, who jumped the gorge on a stock Corley motorcycle. It was later uncovered that he had modified his Corley with a pre-regulation destroyer class solid fuel recoil booster and an automotive hover lift. Myron said he would gladly replicate the jump to clear his name, but his special ramp was stolen by a mysterious truck hijacking motorcycle gang. Hmm. Recoil booster and a hover lift, eh? Thanks for the tip, Rick. You're right, though. I'll need that ramp. Look at him run. Nestor's fault. Get in quick. I have a plan. We're going to lure the Corley Melvin out of hiding with a bike. Boss, she already has a bike. Yes, but this one she worked on with her father. It's an emotional thing. Don't try to understand. Now hurry. a single hover lift unit. Looks okay for an aftermarket part.
the tour. I haven't seen you since you retired from the Polecats. Hey, Ben. How's my gang doing? Uh, that's a long story. What are you doing out here? Well, retirement's pretty boring, Ben. So I thought I'd come out to the old mine road and look for trouble. You're picking fights? That's what the old mine road's for, son. Father Tork, I need your help. The gang's in jail and the law. Ben, I'm not the leader of the Polecats anymore. You are. Can't you see I'm on permanent vacation? Any fighting tips, Tork? Ah, Ben, who's tougher than you? Nobody, but those rod wheelers are uglier. They're none too bright, either. I'm sure you can handle them. The vultures are quick, and they're nuts. The ones with those boosters are hard to whip. Just remember, Ben, it's not about muscle, it's about timing. What's up with those cavefish, man? Watch out, Ben. They're not out here for sport. They hijack big rigs. It's part of their religion. Don't get in their way. They're blind, cold-hearted killers. How do the cavefish ride if they're blind? Well, they're only blind because they wear those special goggles to shield their sensitive cave-dwelling eyes. Special sensors in the goggles pick up the dots in the road and other large objects and landmarks to help them navigate. <laughs> kind of trippy, huh? You know any way around Boyahoga Gorge? Around it? <laughs> it's miles and miles long, Ben. What's the matter? Don't like bridges? It blew up. Ooh, sorry I missed that. Well, you could jump it, like Ricky Myron. Cavefish got his ramp in their hideout, you know. Where is the cavefish hideout exactly? Somewhere on this road. The entrance is totally invisible, unless you got those weird cavefish specks. Can't talk anymore, Ben. Eating too many bugs. Well, take it easy, Father. Give him hell, Polecat. Friend, what's your name? Glad to see you all rehabilitate. My knuckles were starting to itch. like choppers, huh? How about this chopper? Ha ha ha! Oh, my eyes! Wow, are you really a polecat? Yes, I am. Well, I hate polecats. Thank you. <laughs> Oh. 
Say there, is that a pre-regulation destroyer class solid fuel recoil booster you have there? Why, yes it is. Ta-da! <laughs> Shouldn't hit a man when <coughs> you cry. <coughs> you drop anchor or something? Sorry, gotta run. So you've come for a lesson in pain. Pay close attention. This will hurt. Clam bike! This, Charlie, freaky punk. This time you're I gonna stay down. That. Now I'm mad. Bet you just took the training wheels off, huh? Ganky polecat scum! <laughs> Boom! <laughs> 
drop anchor or something. That should have a couple of good boosts left in it. Everything about these guys is creepy. Property of the Ricky Myron Traveling Stunt Show. enough.
The Corley Motors Factory. Holy ground. I'm here for the shareholders meeting. Mr. Ripperger has postponed the meeting until Mr. Corley's murderers are apprehended. All the shareholders were notified. Yeah. Well, I haven't checked my voicemail lately, Mac. Something big's going on in there. Cool. Souvenirs here! Uh, we got your hats. We got your pennants. <clears throat> what can I get you? Why are all the lights down here? We got a demolition derby tonight. First prize is a vintage curly hardtail. Completely restored by the old man himself. Yep. What's this big arena doing way out here? Corley built the Smashatorium so his employees could have some wholesome entertainment nearby. He sure took care of his employees. I got no idea what's gonna happen to us now that he's gone. I'm looking for a good souvenir. Well, good souvenirs is all I got. What can I fix you up with? Something small, furry, and yellow. Sorry, this is the only set of teeth I got. <laughs> Dang, there goes another one. How about that little car there? It's small, but it's not cheap, my friend. You better just take it for a test drive to make sure. Bunnies, and plenty of them. You want bunnies? I got your bunnies. How much you got on you? Um, can I just take them out for a test drive? I think you may not be ready for the kind of commitment that comes with a Corley Bunny value pack. Sorry, son. Shirts come in extra, extra large. Eh. Eh, no, but they're pretty shrunk. No thanks. What do those pennants say on them? Can't beat a Corley, they say. Kind of ironic, actually, considering how he died. Still, look great on your bedroom wall. My walls. My bike is my home. We could set you up with a little pole so you could uh, make a flag, you know, for your back seat. I'll, uh, think about it. Do you actually have any money? As much as I need. Seen any vultures around here? Nah, we don't have much of a vulture problem here. Even though their hideout is right up the road. They stay pretty much locked up in there. Not very social. What's in the hat? I don't know. Came filled with it. Probably some sort of packing material. Packs a punch, I'll tell you that much. Looky here. Nothing personal. But why don't you mosey along and stop scaring away all the other customers, all right? Just clearing my throat. We got it all right here. Official Corley Motors merchandise. Sure, sure. Take it for a spin. Just don't go out of range. Our bunnies come with batteries included. Lovable, lovable little bunnies. The officially licensed bunny of the Corley Motors Smashatorium. Looks like it's getting weak. Oh great, you killed the batteries. We got your t-shirts here. All sizes and colors. It's out of juice. Fill our handy beverage hats with your drink of choice. All right, let's see the cash, amigo. I'll owe ya. No bucks, no yucks, compadre. Uh, you, big fella, come give our derby car a spin. Souvenirs to remind you of your special smashatory. I'm not going in there. They all think I killed their beloved leader. Buy your kids a bunny so they'll shut up on the long drive home. Excuse me, but are those shirts, uh, 
Or the old cotton. Well, uh... Let you see here. One hundred percent cotton. Oh. Um, that's too bad. I'm allergic to cotton. The vultures hide out on the other side of this field. I've heard a lot about the vultures. And I guess it's all true. I wonder how they keep it so smooth. Those weapons were at a weight. Stinks. <laughs> Pat the bunny. You know you want to. No. Uh, you just can't get this stuff anywhere else. That should put some life into it. Sure, sure. Take it for a spin. Just don't go out of range. And it's cheap, too. Okay, that's far enough, bud. Hey, don't go in there. Now look what you did. The entrance is all the way through the factory. Hang on, little buddy. Daddy's coming. Now it's just me and the bunnies. Field's been replanted, tidy little vultures.
Don't think so. Set off any of these boys. Mm. Hmm. Surprises. That's the guy I was telling you about, Susie. You sure? Yeah. That's the guy who killed my father. All right, vultures! Rack them up! Let's rip them quick. Listen, though. You're making a big mistake. Oh, Ben, you're right. We shouldn't do this quickly. We should draw this out, don't you think, Susie? Hey, I got all night. You heard her, kids. Let's draw this out. <coughs> Your father. Don't you dare talk about my father, you heartless bastard. Corley and I. I said shut up about my dad. Malcolm once. I said shut up about my dad. I'm innocent. You're in something, all right. Okay, that's enough. Mm, not quite. <clears throat> I'm losing my temper, Marine. And you're about to lose much more. Let me go, or else... Or else what? I'll call you names. <laughs> like what? Diaper Dynamo. How... How'd you hear that name? Your father. He told me just before he died. You bludgeoned my father and then talked about old times? I didn't kill him. Rip Berger did. A photographer took pictures, but her camera was stolen by the same thug that came after you. I... I still have that role. Well, develop it, would you? While I still fit in my clothes? Okay, you stay here. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, well, don't sweat it. I'm gonna get Rip Burger even if I die trying. No, we have to expose Rip Burger at the shareholders meeting. That way, we take him down, we save my gang, and your father gets his dying wish. You take over Corley Motors. Rip Burger canceled the shareholders meeting. He made a statement to the press that there'd be no meeting until the murderers were brought to justice. So, no shareholders meeting until we're both dead? Hmm, that could be arranged. Okay, so here we go. Faking Ben and Maureen's death. Act one, scene one. Adrian Ripberger, in a desperate attempt to lure our Maureen out of hiding, has developed the following lame-ass scheme. First prize at tonight's smash-up derby is a vintage hardtail that Mo restored with her dad. Rip hopes Mo will try to nab said bike on account of her sentimental attachment to it. So Ben and Mo play along, put on disguises, and enter the demolition derby, which ends tragically when their cars explode and both are presumed dead. Uh, question? Please save your questions until the end. Now, the explosives in Mo's car can only be triggered by a head-on collision with Ben's car. This ejector seat projects Mo clear of the explosion, and she parachutes to safety. Don't you think someone will notice her rejecting out of her car? No. They'll all be watching you running around on fire. Yeah, that's another question I have.
When your car explodes, you climb from it in flames and run around the stadium distracting the audience. In your cute little asbestos suit, of course. <laughs> That's some plan. All right, then. Let's go blow your little darlings up. All right, folks. Hang on to your chili dogs, because it's time to start. The Corley Motor Smashatorium Amateur Driver Ultimate Destruction Maximum Carnage Marathon. Let's meet our crash cage gladiator. That mysterious-looking hooded figure wouldn't give us his real name. He prefers to be known as the Unknown Avenger. And that's just fine with us, isn't it, folks? <laughs> now I'm just embarrassed for them. Who do they think they're fooling with those ludicrous disguises? And next to him is another newcomer. Please give a big smashatorium salute. To the Princess of Pile-Up, Doreen Schmorley! All right, boys. Sick of me. And finally, we have a last-minute addition to the lineup tonight. A deadly-looking team known as the Boom Boom Brothers. Mm -hmm. Try and get away now, bicycle boy. All right, now. Are you ready to see some reckless driving? Are you Ben? Hang on, Bo. Here I come. Watch out for the Boom Boom Brothers, Mo. I stalled when I bounced off the roof. Looks like these babies have a glass jaw. Ben, what are you doing? Get over here and nail me! I can't avoid these other cars forever. Your moment to sh- Man, 
Quit clowning around and make a diversion. I am a diversion. No offense, but we need a bigger one. The bike is guarded. Who cares about the bike? Mo says it's important, so we're not leaving without it. All right, I'll see what I can do, but I'm burning at both ends here. I can't see it. Man, you gotta make a big, big diversion. We ain't leaving without that bike. Oh, what a pain, Franklin! Well, folks, it looks like the party's getting a little out of hand. The stadium seems to be catching fire, but let's all remain calm and... Finally. Now, squish that firefly while he's hot. <laughs> Look at him run. Did you get him? We finally got him, Bolas. That means Ripburger has to make us vice presidents now, like he promised. And give us 10,000 shares of stock each. Hmm. Funny smell. What's that? The temperature light? Well, on the bright side, I just made 20,000 shares of stock. Time to start the shareholders meeting. Where's the hardtail? All over the floor, Mr. Avenger. What? What happened to your deep sentimental attachment to your father's vintage bike? Ben, it's just a bike. I can put it back together in about a half an hour. That's assuming, of course, I can find that key. What key are you talking about? Key to my dad's safe. I remember he hid it somewhere on this bike. But I've looked everywhere and I can't find anything that even looks like a key. What's in the safe that's so important? My dad's will. I'm counting on him to tell the truth about me, finally. Why did he keep you a secret all these years? He didn't want people to find out about my mom. What's so bad about Mrs. Corley? She wasn't my mom. Huh. But how are we going to get in the factory? In the back of the factory, there's a secret entrance that leads straight into Dad's office. He used to sneak me in so I could help him with his bike designs. When he got too old to do all the work himself? Nah, this is back when I was six. Hmm. How do I find the secret passage? Well, it's tricky. You have to wait for all the utility meters to turn black. Then you kick the wall in just the right spot and you're in. How do I find the right spot to kick? Dad just knew exactly where to kick it. But I remember that there was this big crack in the wall. And if I lined up that crack with my eye level and kick the wall right in front of me, this weird portal would open up. Hmm. What are we in, anyway? It's a C-330 Big Mouth Industrial Cargo Jumbo Transport we fixed up. We want to get it rolling so we can take it to biker rallies. You're going to try to fly this thing? Rolling, Ben. Rolling. This baby's flying days are over, just like mine. How was your flight? Well, there were some explosions during takeoff and I landed in a minefield, but other than that, it was fine. I'm fine, by the way. Thanks for asking. Uh-huh. Great. Now help me find that key. Remember that time you tried to kill me? 
Yeah, we really taught you a lesson. <laughs> Get it? I'll see what I can do. Right. I'll see what I can do. Right. Here, take the photos. I don't want them. Show them to someone important if you get a chance. These must be the meters Mo was talking about. out of the pension fund. Now that's art. sort of card and a tape. I sure hope that's Corley's will. It's locked. Looks like the meeting started. Was not only an inspirational leader, but also a great personal friend. His loss affects us all deeply. Malcolm and I spoke often of the future. We talked of a day when Corley Motors would move beyond its humble beginnings into a new vehicular age. And although his tragic death took him from us sooner than anyone expected, Malcolm Corley's dream remains. And I shall carry out that dream in his memory. Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to present to you the future of Corley Motors. The Corley Minivan. <laughs> Corley was right. I never dreamed it would actually come to minivans, though. Hey, who are you? How long have you been there? Oh, security! Help! Security! What took you so long? He ran down the hallway. 
move it. Maybe this must be saying things. Mo gave me the photos of her dad's murder. Gruesome. Corley Motors. Cool. What you see before you right now is my vision for Cornwallis. Oh, perfect. This is a disaster. You're telling me. We're gonna have some major downtime here. Why don't you tell a joke or something? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know any jokes. <laughs> You know, this reminds me of an amusing anecdote <laughs> about a... Uh, uh, I... Well, I'm out of ideas. Now this is multimedia. This is where you put the cards for the big screen video projector. Now, this next slide shows our new, more aggressive corporate strategy. If you're hearing this, I must have croaked. Well, people gotta move on, you know, and make room for other people. And that's what I'm here to talk about today. I've made room for someone else to take my place at Corley Motors. And it ain't that embezzling crook, Adrian Ripburg. Rip, you don't belong at the head of my company. You belong in jail. Uh... I let that man talk me into far too many things. Like keeping my daughter a secret. He was wrong. I was wrong. I should have stood by her. I hope, Maureen, that you forgive me. And that you take over Corley Motors and run it however you see fit. All right, that's enough. How do I turn this damn thing off? I... Uh, I'm sorry you had to hear that tape from... One of Malcolm's psychiatric sessions. And near the end, he, he suffered many paranoid delusions. He was haunted by powerful forces of his own creation. And here's one of them. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Maureen Corley, and do I have a heck of a story for you. By the time I'm done, you'll see why this man should be in jail. Hey! Hobble off to. Uh oh. There he goes. And then he sent his goons after me. Run, Rip Burger. When it's time to find you, we'll just follow the shiny trail. Yes, of course we'll have daycare facilities. Any other questions? Oh, speak of the devil. Come over here, Ben. That was great, Ben. You're finally where we were meant to be all along. So, after we pick up your bike, we'll go get my gang out of jail. And then find out why my gang never showed up to help us. And then you go business suit shopping. Don't remind me. Don't complain. You're going to be rich. At this point, I'd settle for just a little peace and quiet. She interrupted my speech, Ben. She really shouldn't have. I'm 
was just about to talk about the inherent dangers of lunar cycle operation. Can't you make this damn thing go any faster? You said this thing couldn't move. I said it couldn't fly. I never said it couldn't taxi. Well, flying would be nice since we're headed for the gorge. Ripperger, you're going to kill all of us. Shh, Ben. Don't ruin the ending. How do you stop this thing? From the cockpit! Hmm. Hmm. Hello? Back off, man. Ben. So much for the controls. I could have used those. Nothing. What the? Ah! Ben, what did you do? Ben! Are you alive? I am, but I don't know about Rip Burger. I can see him. He's out cold. Climb back here, quick! Careful, Ben! I'm taking you and your friends with me, Ben. All you're taking is the wrong kind of medication.
<laughs> I think you just killed a seagull! Played it by his own rules. He was a mystery to most of us, and yet an inspiration to us all. He gave us freedom, he gave us power, he gave us wings, he gave us wheels. Thank you, Malcolm Corley, for giving us a dream that will never die. So... So? Uh, maybe we could do lunch sometime next week. Yeah, sure. Lunch sounds great. Things aren't gonna change, are they, Ben? I mean, just because I'm in charge of the company now, and living in a mansion and riding around in limos, that doesn't mean we won't spend a lot of time together, does it? Look, Mo, you're in a different league now. You shouldn't be hanging out with the likes of me anymore. But Ben... <sighs> just a second. Hello? What? No, 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 that's crazy. Is he nuts? Look, move the meeting up to five and tell the plant foreman that I'm coming over personally to inspect those parts. I know, I know, that's what I told him. <sighs> Excuse me, what was that last part? No, 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 that alloy was flawed to begin with. Uh-huh, yeah, 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 good, great.
the population is greatly decreased And now the odds are greatly increased That I may someday get a chance To kiss your lips I thank the Lord each day For the apocalypse Folks are mostly disfigured or dead But sugar, I won't let it go to my head My mama's face has dripped down into the dirt But I'm still chasing Chitlin's whiskey and skirt Thank you.